Sunday, Mother's Day, May 13th, 2018. You are whew, inside the sanctuary recording studio of the New Greater New Bethel Baptist Church. I am Albert Franklin Langster bringing you a brief message today, a message came out of Moses' song. God gave Moses a song. Then he called him on up to Mount Nebo to die. Well, he showed him the promised land and uh, Moses sang a song as recorded here about the perfections of God. And I won't deal with the song in its entirety, but just give you a little piece of it. Uh, and try to hurry up and get on out of your way. Look with me, if you will, please, into the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 32. At verse 4, we find these words. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. Subject for the message is doing business with God in truth. Part two. Ah, I'm just glad to be able to break the bread of life here inside the four consecrated walls of God's house. I'm going to put some of my notes and reminders aside and try to get on through this thing. Doing business with God in truth. Last week we looked at doing business with God in wisdom. Next week we will consider and examine another avenue in which we can do business with God. But our text tells us that God is the rock. Let me get it and look at it and read it to you again. It says here in verse 4, He is the rock. His work is perfect. Look, a diamond is a rock. A ruby is a rock. Both are valued are, uh, rocks. And some people, some women, bought her on worshiping these rocks. But I just want you to know today that the rock is worthy of worship and praise. Have you ever had any contact with the rock? Songwriter wrote a song says, 
take me to the rock that is higher than I. Our text tells us about the nature of God, calling him a God of truth. That is an indispensable part of the nature of God. But in order to help us to understand the God of truth, our church fathers of antiquity gave us a phrase known as the attributes of God. The better Baptist churches will not lay holy hands on a man if he has not been thoroughly schooled on the attributes of God. The better churches, the better Baptist churches. You won't get up, preach, and get licensed and ordained in these churches. You got to know the attributes of God. The word attribute is defined as the quality or character of a person or thing. That's what an attribute is. The quality or character of a person or thing. You're going to get a look at the quality and character of God today. More than that, you're going to get a full view of God's modus operandi. You get a chance to see how God works. You're going to get a chance to see what make God what he is. Your character tells people what kind of person you are. Well, Reverend, what kind of God is a God of truth? What is it about him that makes him what he is? What are the attributes of a God of truth. Well, God, our God, the believer's God, my God, I want to say he's an awesome God, but our God has two Features uh, in his attributes. Well, he has two attributes. Got no features. Two attributes that make him the kind of God that he is a God of truth. Well, what are those two attributes? I want you to do business with God now. I want you to do business with God in truth. And I don't want you to do business with God without knowing how he works. His first attribute is what we call a natural attribute. It's just natural. His second attribute is moral attribute. I have an acronym that enabled me to memorize 
God's natural attributes. And I'm not going to share that acronym with you, but I will run through his natural attributes right quickly so I can get on with the message about doing business with God in truth. The first of his natural attributes is eternity. He had no beginning. He does not need help from anybody to be God. He's God all by himself. Always God. Eternity characterizes his first, uh, uh, the first of his natural attributes. And the second of his natural attributes is immutability. That means he's unchangeable. Always the same. Omnipotence is the third. That means he's got all power. Omniscient he's all, means he's all knowing. Omnipresent, another of his attributes, natural attributes, means that he's everywhere. He's present everywhere. The final of his moral attributes is unity. There's one God. There's no division in God. He's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, all in one. Those are the natural features of God's character that make him God. Natural attributes. Well, Reverend, what about his moral attributes? Ha. They're easy. Ha. Wisdom is one of his moral attributes. Justice is another of his moral attributes. Goodness is one of his Attributes and the final attribute, moral attribute of God is truth. He has four moral attributes. Goodness, truth, justice, wisdom. My friends, that is what makes him a holy God. Those are the elements of holiness. Y'all need to learn this. You can do business with God. Throwing that rock, hiding your hand, you can't do business with God. Whew. Carrying on a whole lot of foolishness, can't do business with God. That's unwise. Huh. Just be holy because God is holy. Goodness, truth, justice, and wisdom will make anybody holy. So far in this message, I've given you God's modus operandi. That is how God works. Next step in the message, let us consider whether or not you and I are working with God. I'm going to give you a clue to help with that consideration. And I'm going to give you a clue by arguing that the God of the Bible, the God of truth, the rock, never bothered himself to hide or cover up the sinful ways of his children. 
And he's not going to cover up your sin. He's not going to hide them. He'll forgive you for them. Once you're forgiven, they get thrown in a sea of forgetfulness, but they ain't thrown in no sea of cover-up. That cover-up business come out, out off Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. Cover this up. Cover that up. We don't serve a cover-up God. We serve the rock. And if it didn't cover up the activities of the womanizing Samson, if it didn't cover up the adultery of David, and if it didn't cover up the murder committed by Moses, then he's not going to cover up all of your and my sin. Why should he cover them up? He paid for our sins through the finished works of Jesus Christ. Now isn't that good news? I might not know about all of your sins that Jesus died to pay for, but you know about the biggest of them. And you know how grievous they were. How horrible your sins were. I don't know. But they were notorious sins. No big sins or little sins. All sins are big sins. For some of you who have suppressed so deeply into your subconscious mind, those sins that you've forgotten all about. And today, I will not, in this message, rake over the coals of all your past sins. Instead, I admonish us all to work with God, to do business with God in truth. My friends, one thing you can be sure of is this. That if you are not working with God, you're working against him. There's no middle ground. It's either God or the devil that you're doing business with. That you are working with. So let us not kid ourselves, my friends. First John. Not 1 John, St. John, 14 and 6. Jesus speaks, and he identifies himself. 1 John 14 and 6. Jesus says, it says there, and Jesus said unto him, in this sentence, this is a, it has every appearance of a compound, complex sentence. There are simple sentences, there are compound sentences, there are complex sentences but Jesus' words in this sixth verse appeals to me and you English instructors I solicit your editorial comments 
regarding the nature of this sentence in the six, these six verses of the 14th chapter of John. Looks to me like it's a compound complex sentence. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Leaving the life and the way. Let's just edit out these words of Jesus. I am the truth. Deuteronomy says he's a God of truth. There's no inconsistency between the Old and New Testament. Dr. Gary Barmore told me, he said that there are the, new, the, 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 the New Testament is built up on top of the Old Testament. He said that the Old Testament is just a substructure whew, of the New Testament. Jesus' truth in Genesis, I mean in Deuteronomy. And he's the truth in John. My friends, Jesus is the truth. And if we want to do business with God, we must do business in Jesus. Uh, there is a glaring contrast in St. John, verse 10, chapter 10. We leave, we leave. John 14 alone and go to John 10, 10. Let me hurry up and get out of here. I'm 22 minutes gone already. John 10, 10 says, let me get it here to read it to you. I know what it says, but I just want to read it to you. It says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. There is a glaring contrast there between the works of Jesus, the works of a devil. Who are you working for? He, that old devil, he's a liar, he's a deceiver, and he just erroges the days all along, and destruction is in his nature, killing physically, spiritually, morally, all those three killings, part of the devil's modus operandi. You working for him? Let me give you a clue. I got a phone call from the devil two or three days ago. I was taking my afternoon nap. The caller, I answered the phone. The caller did not give me her name, nor did she say who gave her my phone number. But she did say this. She said, this is the health center calling. Calling to see if you want some free information about pain management. She didn't ask me my name, indicating that she didn't care who I was. That's if I wanted her free information. Let me tell you something. When the devil call you, he's not going to call you and say, 
I am Lucifer, and I am the father of lies, and I'm calling to trick you and to steal from you and or, uh, destroy you. No, he's not going to say that. He's going to come with something to offer. Free. I politely but abruptly ended that conversation. Uh, but in the work of the devil, he stretches, he stretches the truth. He stretches the truth until it no longer be, can be considered true. Are you stretching the truth today? He's the father of lies. That's what the Bible says about him. Then comes the stealing, deception, the killing. Whew, my friends, your God is a God of truth. Work with him. Do business with him. Do business honestly, in integrity. Over here to my right side, my right shoulder, that would be the left shoulder in the camera, is Martin Luther King Jr. And looks like just beneath him there is Michelangelo's rendering of the prophet Moses. Moses' song pinned there in Deuteronomy. You read that entire uh, 32nd chapter of Deuteronomy and you will find the woes that resulted because of people not working with God. Yes, my friends, your God is a God of truth. Work with him, do business with him. So, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, he's able to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy because he's the only wise God to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Both now henceforth, and forevermore. Now if you say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins and I believe that God raised you from the dead, saved my soul. If you say those words, you will be prepared. If you say it and mean it, you will be prepared. Do business with God. So may he bless you and keep you till we meet again.